comic stew. And welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another edition of the Comic Stew, episode 10. I'm one of your hosts, Aaron, as always. And as always, I'm joined by my permanent other host. I don't want to call him a co-host. He's my other host, Mr. J.C. Argensinger. Always a dick. <laughs> and you always have that beard, so we're tied. And this is a very special episode of the Comic Stew. We are pleased to bring you our first guest of uh, existence of this podcast. I would like to welcome Mr. Ian Stickroth. All right, hopefully I'm also going to be the worst guest. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> And the last because we couldn't, because it just dropped the barrier so low. Well, you're our first guest, and if we, if we never have another one, you will be simultaneously our best and worst guest. There you go. Uh, how you doing, Ian? I'm not doing too bad. Yeah? Well, uh, we're really excited because um, we have a little, little story of uh, Ian going to the comic shop, and I'm very excited to hear about that because it's been how many years since you've been to the comic shop? Well... I did have one comic book shop experience recently, but but to buy comics, it's probably been maybe 12 years, 15 years. Wow. Somewhere in there. But you still occasionally read comics. Um, I mean, we, we, we know, we, we know some, some people around who are kind of kind of big in the industry that, that pass us books sometimes. Sometimes people will let me borrow stuff. I don't I don't always read it, but um, it's not a video game. It's hard for Ian to get behind. Well, That's you know, true. I do like this 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 Comixology app that you told us about. Um, <laughs> it's, Did he just say Comixology? <laughs> yeah, that's how it's spelled. What? All right, that that's how I'm gonna pronounce from now on the comicsology. The comicsology, yeah. I, I like that a little better, actually. Uh, you know, I've I've never actually I don't know if I've ever actually officially heard it said, so it could be pronounced comicsology, and we just never knew, right, JC? I think that that is actually the case that it's comicsology. Okay, so the, yeah, the way, I the, the way the font's written, it looks like comicsology rather than comicsology, which makes you think yeah. it's. Like Co-ed mixing, a co-ed mixer dating app, which really, really isn't. It's definitely deceiving. I was looking for some drink recipes, but. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, a good segue there, Ian. You're a natural. Um, what are we sipping on? I'm I'm sipping on three things. <laughs> okay, well, well, let's come to you last since you're the guest. Let's start with JC. I'm uh I'm drinking some Sierra Nevada pale ale. Just like last week. You're really stepping outside the bounds. What's in the fridge, man? I haven't been home much. You restocked your fridge after last week, right? Or was that the week before where you ran out of everything? I think it was the week before that I ran out of everything. And <sighs> stocked some Sierra Nevadas, but I haven't been home too much since then, so... Mm, been a busy boy for numerous reasons. Um, well, I am sipping on something that uh, I talked about my brother um, getting me a couple of bottles uh, over the Christmas break, and I actually picked something up when I was in Tucson. It is called Original Black Powder Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And... Uh, I bought it be for two reasons. Number one, it was like fairly cheap, and number two, since it was fairly cheap, I wanted to test my theory that there is no bad bourbon, no matter how cheap. So I bought a $12 bottle of uh, black powder bourbon, which uh, actually is not half bad. So my theory is holding true. No, you said it was going to be good, not half bad. Those are different. Um, it's not bad. It's uh. It's good though. You didn't say it was good. You said it was not bad. I thought the challenge was there's no bad bourbon. It's no not, yeah. Actually. It's not bad. Okay, I take I take back the half bad. It's not bad. 
It's a, it's actually decent. It's decent. It looks okay, like it's in a glass bottle, though. Yeah, you can use the word decent. It's I don't, uh, know. I don't know. Yeah, it's a glass bottle. It's got a cool logo. It's got uh, one of the Civil War era cannons on it with okay, the wheels, dig, you know. I dig that. The yeah. um, it doesn't count that like your theory can't hold up until you start getting into plastic bottles. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. I would say I would say the cheapest bottle of bourbon that that is that is glass. Like the the cheapest glass bottle is going to be good. Like or or not bad, I would say. I mean, you guys can get behind that. Okay, now he's qualifying. Yeah. Okay. I've never. Well, I, I, what even comes in plastic bottles? Bourbon wise, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there is anything. Bourbon has some standards. Anyways, it's no. Good. I was I'm, just saying, I have some standards. I don't buy shit in a mm. plastic bottle. Yeah. No, neither do I. Um, unless uh, yeah, actually, I I, I never do that. Um, and, uh, Ian, what, what are you sipping on? You said you had three things. It sounded like you were thinking back to a time where you actually bought a glass bottle there, or, or a plastic bottle there. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking back and trying to remember, like, if I did, it was probably, like, when I was in college and it was some mixer for, you know, a party situation. Like, I bought a big handle of something and to use as, like, a whiskey and Coke type mixer. That was before I discovered the finer things of life. Okay, well, there was a time when we were all scrounging. All yeah, time. yeah, yeah. You can't count that because that was before I, before my love of bourbon really took flight. All right, well, I'm sipping on a Guinness. Okay. I also have a, I also have a coffee because I wanted to make sure that I had some energy today. I didn't want it to be like uh, Aaron with the... Uh, the, the first 10 minutes of apologizing how, how lazy and, and uh, terrible this episode's going to be. Well, Whoa, that was welcome, because we were welcome, recording welcome. like 2 o'clock. We're <laughs> recording so late at night because it's always got to be on JC's schedule. And even though I'm complaining about JC's schedule, like I haven't slept in four days because I haven't left work at all. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's definitely not my schedule, but I'm really cranky and I'm sorry ahead of time. So none of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ian, don't don't shatter my goodwill against you, okay? You know, no my impressions. We appreciated the uh, the comment the other day you know, that I got to feature in the other episode. Uh, oh I, yeah, I, I was. I listened for that. Yeah. I wanted to go. I, I wanted to make it look like a real internet troll with the terrible spelling and um, incoherent words. I mean. Yeah, you succeeded. All right, because, you know, the Internet's a pretty scary place the more I dive into it. There's a whole community of people out there that still think the Earth is flat. Especially real. YouTube comments. Never never go into YouTube comments. It's, it's, it's a second level of hell. Nah, it can be fun. It can be fun sometimes. Last about ten seconds, and then you, you got to leave before your, your soul is slowly shrunken down. All right. Well, um, speak. Well, the opposite of uh, the soul shrinking down. Let's talk about Ian going to the comic shop. I want to hear about this. What'd you get, Ian? All right. Are you sure you want to hear about this? I do want to hear about this. What what shop do you go to? Um, so I went to. Uh, it's in Burbank. It's called um, House of Secrets. What's it called? House of Secrets. There it is. Okay. Yeah. I know where it is. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah. Um. He works right by a comic shop. This is the first time he's gone to it in years. Um, it's the second time I've gone to it, because uh, that, that brings me to the first thing that I bought, which was just a random back issue of Adventure Time. Okay. Um, which I didn't Published intend to read. Studios. Yeah, didn't intend to read, but I, I owed them one, because um, the last time I had gone in this comic shop, I went to buy books for a, a friend of ours um, who had a file where they'd pull books for him. Oh, and yeah. He hadn't been in a while. So I'm like, hey, let me let me get his books, and they give me this giant stack of like 50 comic books, <laughs> 80 yeah. percent of which is Adventure Time. Nice. And I just grabbed all the Adventure Time and was like, I don't want this. Sorry, <laughs> put it on the shelf. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. <laughs> you got you got a stack of 50 books, and you you gave them back one book. No, I gave them back like. 
like 40 books that were all Adventure Time, and I didn't nice. buy them. I only bought the other ones that weren't Adventure Time. So I went in this time. I bought one Adventure Time just to get them back. I owe them a few Adventure Times, so. Oh, okay. That was the only thing you bought this time was Adventure Time? No, that was, the, that was the first thing I grabbed, and then I started looking on the shelf for the new releases to see what I could find. Um, and I immediately gravitated toward Masters of the Universe, uh, Origin of Hordak, Okay, tell, talk about this, because I've known you for a long time, Ian. I had no idea that you had it, any interest whatsoever in He-Man. Um, oh, like what, my, my, one of my greatest memories of Christmas morning is coming downstairs to like a just long line of He-Man guys all stacked up. It was the greatest. Wow. I had a ton of them. I had them all when I was a kid. How old were you? Um, I was probably... 27. Four or five, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was nice. only two years ago, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you could get He-Man guys anymore, well, they're not the same. You can still get them, I'm sure. But... Yeah, I'm sure. So it was an origin story, which I was intrigued by, because I'm sort of always fascinated by origins. Um. So I am not a He-Man. Uh, fan at all like I, I don't think I've read one He-Man comic and I may have had like an action figure one, at one time I may have but but I don't I know I know uh, it's Skeletor right is the villain Skeletor is the He-Man villain yeah Hordak yeah. is actually the, the villain from from the, the spin-off uh, She-Ra who was always okay. a thorn in his side She-Ra who's that She-Ra's the, the female He-Man yeah oh Okay, so he so he's like an antagonist. He's the, yeah, Hordak's the antagonist. He's like the Skeletor of Shira's world. Uh, um, so it just tells his uh, his origin, but it was not. It was sort of just a cliched like, oh, he tricked these um, guys into battling his army, and a million people died on each side in this cosmic battle, and then he just ate all their souls. But he left like one guy alive to toy with until he squashed his head like a grape. Wow. Um, uh, was that written by Tim Seeley by any chance? It was not. Why is that okay. his mo? That well, Tim Seeley he he's a uh, he's he's a pretty established comic creator. He's also a humongous He-Man fan apparently, and uh, okay. he I, I guess he's written a lot of He-Man comics. He also writes a uh, Hack Slash. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah, it's a horror book. Um, I think that's that came out for Top Cow. I think. I can't remember. Anyways, yeah. Um, but that, that's all I know about He-Man comics. But, so, uh, so it, is it was Shira... A, yeah, it's an origin story told from the perspective of somebody who wasn't the character that they're doing the origin for, which was sort of odd, but the only reason the guy was left alive was so that Hordak could explain why he was uh, tricking him into eating all these souls and becoming a god, but, I mean there was really no reason for him not to just let this guy die too, eat his soul and go about, you know, being a god. So it's it's written about uh or it's it's told through the perspective of like a character that's not Hordak. Yeah, the lone survivor uh, okay, that's going okay. against him trying to kill him and then he Got it, got it. He goes and tries to kill him and obviously loses, gets his head squashed like a grape. Gotcha. Well, uh, so, so who's that um published by? This is published by DC Entertainment. Oh, really? Yeah. So is that a is that a thing? Are they doing like a line of He-Man comics now? Well, I mean, there's Masters some, of the Universe. There's some advertisements back here to get your Hordak fix elsewhere. So wow. Um, I guess they got that going on. All right. But I like the, I like how you're asking the the non comic book guy if that's a, a line of comics that's coming out. Well. This non-comic guy knows way more uh, about He-Man comics than I do, which uh, for me is nothing. And he read one He-Man comic, so he knows infinitely more. That's accurate. Yeah. So a little disappointing, because I mean, if you like go into like origin stories of like Genghis Khan, you know, there's some really fascinating stuff where like you know he talks his little brother into getting together and murdering their older brother and then his mom hates him forever for it but there's nothing she can do and then like his wife's stolen and he's got to take her back and like you know really cool stuff and all he did was take over like half the world this guy took over an entire universe 
And that's all we get is just one, like, battle that they don't even talk much about. Okay, hold on. Sort of we got to go back to this. Is it just shitty pronouncement night? You, did you just say Genghis Khan? I was going to let him slide because he's a guest. Oh, no. No, no, no. This is the second time. Genghis gonna... Khan? Come on, Ian. You're a huge history buff. How can you say that? Okay. Um, do we need to get into Googling pronunciations? Do you guys want to lose a Google fight with me right now? No, we're not doing that on the show. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so... Well, you got a few more comics. What was the uh, what was the other ones? All right. So then I made my way over. Um, I was gonna buy the the mice templar. I think it's called because it said ten out of ten right on the cover. Um, but I couldn't figure out where to start. Like I was looking through the books, didn't really like. I didn't see a number one. Didn't like. There was no coherent. Like they were just sort of in any random order. Couldn't figure it out. So. Um, now that's the uh, the Michael Omin series, right? I don't know. Okay. What was the name of the series? I didn't, I didn't hear it. The Mice Templar. Okay. Yeah, isn't that Michael Avon Omin? Because Mouse Guard is, a, is another thing. I was looking at a book that was by Emming, yes. So that probably was it. Okay. Um, I eventually then came across uh, one of my old favorites, probably the comic book I read for the longest. Um and also got my anthropomorphics fix from uh, Usagi Yojimbo. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you're going to say Crimson for a second. No, like, that... I guess I was, Usagi Yojimbo is a longer-running series. Yeah, when I was still reading comics after Crimson was over once in a while. Uh, Probably okay. only Usagi Yojimbo, but... Um, you know, I picked it up and read through it pretty quick, and was trying to figure out, is this going to hold up? And I was sort of disappointed by the story because it was like one of those that read like a kid's book for a little bit but then it like you know he, he threw some twists in there that like made it actually a satisfying story and after I was done I, I actually enjoyed it so um, okay so yeah Stan Sakai um, had me fooled I thought I was going to not like it and then ended up not being too bad that's why I'm glad we brought Ian on he reads books that I don't read so we're getting a whole new side of comics tonight. Well, yeah. I mean, I I tended to go for more of the uh, the books, especially as, as I got as older. With the well, just not the like superhero stuff. I got out of that. Like I, it kind of got old for a while for me personally. Mm -hmm. When like you know you've got Cyclops who's in a shitty situation and he's like, oh, what do I do? I guess I'll just optic blast my way out of here. Or like Green Arrow, and he's like, "Well, I got a bow and arrow, so I guess I'll just use that." Like, I, I superpowers weren't doing it for me, so I got into reading books like that, which is Usagi's sort of like a history book, but you know, with animals. Okay. Yeah, I've I heard of that book. I, go ahead. It's based on like a real samurai's life. Loosely. Loosely, yeah. Nice. I mean, he wasn't actually a samurai rabbit. He didn't actually have a friend that was a rhinoceros. Allegedly. But, you know, other than that, it's, like, pretty much all true. Nice. Well, speaking of superhero books, you did get one superhero book, correct? I did get a superhero book, yeah. Um, I guess you I, could say, you could, you could quote-unquote say he's a superhero. Yeah, I, um, on your guys' recommendation, I grabbed Doctor Strange. Nice. Talked um, about that last week. Which he kind of he appeals to me uh, more than a lot of the others because it's sort of that like intelligent mage type, you know, the Sorcerer Supreme. I like. Yeah, like he's not idea. really a superhero. Yeah, not exactly. He's just he he's, exists in the world, but yeah, not not. I wouldn't call him a superhero. Yeah, he's a wizard. Yeah. He's a fucking Avenger. <laughs> so I got yeah, fair enough. All right, he's an Avenger. No, that doesn't mean he's a he's a quote unquote superhero. Okay. Well, no, because, I mean, it, like, Batman's a superhero, but he doesn't have any powers. Yeah. You don't have to have powers to be a superhero. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure people will say, of course, he's a superhero, and I guess you could say he is, but, yeah, he's he's just a, he's a, he's a weird character who's, he's a cool character because of his eccentric nature. Um... And they touched on sort of like that that first page is kind of cool because it's like old panels and, and it like goes into his origin. 
which I had sort of forgotten about because I didn't really read yeah. a lot of Doctor Strange back in the day. But it was it's basically like he's this like super talented, awesome surgeon that like one night's driving drunk and gets in an accident and the nerves are severed in his hands, so he can't do mm. surgery anymore. Which makes me wonder, like, when did this? When did he? When was Doctor Strange created? Does anybody know? 1960s. Uh, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko created him in the uh, 60s. Right. Just like all the, basically the rest of the Marvel universe. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like you know they tried to get that little lesson in there, sort of, but not really, because then he came out of it with even <laughs> cooler powers. Basically, yeah. the awesome lesson is. <laughs> <laughs> They're encouraging drunk driving. Is what you can always to. come back from driving drunk, you know, even if you, you know, even if you're paralyzed. Well, I, I, he did never like fully regain the use of his hands, and he could never like do surgery after that. So he he wasn't. It wasn't like he was completely unchanged. Yeah, he only became a an amazing wizard with way better powers than surgery. Yeah. Well, speaking speaking of the physician angle, didn't you like how it it kind of showed him as like a doctor, like curing like ills? Um, did you did you like that angle they took? What do you mean curing ills? Like, well, I mean, he was he was basically like going into the you know the soul. Like, he was fighting for the souls of. Uh, like a, a a kid who's like sick, and by defeating the like parasitic organisms that were like corrupting the kid's soul, he was able to like free him and heal him. Yeah, no, I I actually I love the concepts. I I wouldn't consider that like a normal doctor healing ills. Right, right. I, it's not a normal doctor, but I, he's not a normal doctor. That's the point. He's saying I mean, the he's parallel to a doctor yeah. making a house call for, you know, a broken arm or something. This yeah, there, there's actually yeah, there, there's the line in the book. I think I'm the last doctor in Manhattan to make house calls. Um. Yeah, I mean, but it's not the other thing too. Though was it wasn't like anybody like he had a phone number in the yellow pages. Yeah, he kind of he kind of gave himself that A team kind of vibe where it's like somehow people find me. I don't know how they find me, but they find me. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like he's got a he's got a normal practice where he goes out and he's got got clients and right. But does that really have to be explained? I no. mean, that's just kind of wasting time. No, but I, I, it reminded me kind of of like the A team. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, what well, the origin speak. reminded me of was like how it's like sort of almost a PSA, which is like '80s cartoons always like there was a law where like cartoons in the '80s also had to be a PSA for for little kids. Let's oh, yeah. commercials. Yeah, like going back to He-Man, like when I watched those cartoons in the 80s, it was like every episode was a lesson. Like there was one where Prince Adam was like a adopted kid, um, causing adopted kids to mistakenly think that they can make something of themselves someday. I remember oh, they would always have like a lesson at the very end of the episode. And then there was like the episode where, you know, being the only female, Tila had to cope with the uh, the rape culture permeate, permeating the halls of Castle Grayskull. <laughs> don't remember that one. Yeah, yeah I didn't really get it back either. then. So this is Ian's history uh, history lesson. Uh, thank you for that, Ian. On, on 80s cartoons. Yeah. Um, and but speaking of uh, bad pronunciation, what did you think of the art by uh, Pit Chris Bacalo? Chris Bacalo. Yeah. Um, I I've always liked the He was on yeah. He was on one of my favorite books. Um, way back in the nineties. Um, which was which was steampunk. Um, written by Joe Kelly. Written by Joe Kelly. What's he doing these days? What's Joe Kelly up to? Uh, well, he's one of them man of action. He's uh doing stuff with um, who is it? Um, who's the other Joe? Who who does? Oh, he's also writing. Joe Casada. I was gonna, no. I was gonna say the same, and I'm like, no, um, oh god, Kirby, I'm having a complete brain fart. Um, it's the guy who writes uh, the book Sex for Image. Um, wow, that's gonna bug me. Vamp, please. Vamp. All right, Aaron's googling it. But in the meantime, like, yeah, uh, Joe Kelly, that book, like, none of it made a bit of sense, but I loved every word of it. 
I don't know the book. Um, yeah, it was late 90s, that cliffhanger line where Joe Matarira was like coming out with a book once every six years. I just love that Ian is butchering every single name he says. <laughs> this is just great. It's it's Joe Madure, Madurera. What did I Madurera. say? You said Joe, Joe Madurera? Joe you Mad. just said Joe Mad. Joe yeah. Mad. And it was I just all realized about, I pronounced uh, that kind of shitty too. And uh, the, jo the Joe I was talking about was Joe Casey. Joe Casey, yes. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, they're doing like... Uh, they're doing a bunch of stuff for like Cartoon Network, and Joe Kelly is writing uh, stuff for Marvel now too. I think he's doing a Deadpool book at the moment. Oh, he was doing a Deadpool book back then. Well, he yeah, he has like the the most well regarded run of Deadpool, like late '90s. Yeah, it was funny. It was actually yeah. a really funny book. Yeah. Um. Oh, have you guys seen the the Deadpool ads? By the way. No, I missed them somewhere. Because they're they're kind of hitting pretty hard right now, since that movie's coming out like in a, a few scant weeks. It's like a Valentine's Day release, right? Oh, I can't wait! I'm like I'm like rolling around the city seeing ads for it. And here's the thing with me and Deadpool, I have never like latched on to an ongoing Deadpool book. I like the character, but I can only take him in small doses. And all the stuff for the movie, it's like. I think this is a perfect amount of Deadpool. Like two hours of Deadpool is perfect. I can do that and be be happy. Right. It's gonna wear thin if they make a Deadpool two. Or if they did like a Deadpool like team up. If he was like on a team in in another movie, you know, because probably my favorite Deadpool appearance was when he was uh, in the Uncanny X Force series by Rick Remender, the recent series. Like, he was great there because he just popped in occasionally, you know, had a few jokes, and he had some cool moments in that series, too, but he wasn't, like, the star. And it could also wear a little thin if they use an actor that's already been a superhero. So, you know, hopefully they won't do that. Oh, well, good thing he wasn't, Ryan Reynolds wasn't uh, in any other superhero movies. <laughs> not, 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 not any that anyone saw. Yeah. <laughs> Although he was ripped in Blade. Uh, in Amityville, that scene where he's chopping wood. Oh uh, yeah, I don't remember that. I was thinking about uh, leave, leave Ian to bring up uh, shirtless Ryan Reynolds. I, I would have thought our friend Matt would do that, but I guess Ian, it's Ian's job today. Um, I still think Ryan Reynolds like they were trying. They're trying to force him down our throats as an action star, but that's not that's not him. He's the rom com guy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like Ryan Reynolds. I. I didn't see the Green Lantern movie, but just like everyone else, I did. But uh, I, I, I did. I'm definitely gonna see him in the Deadpool flick. Yeah, how bad was it? Not as bad as you think, but not good. Yeah. I mean, like they they have at least a passing respect for the character in the sense of like there is a Green Lantern core, and they go and see the see the Green Lantern Corps, and so there is some, like, oh, you're actually do, trying to do the character, and the special effects are okay, and but, I mean, it's just a poorly written movie, but much like a lot of other actors, I don't think he was the reason why the movie was bad. At what point was Green Lantern not a poorly written book? It's true. Not a poorly written book? Dude, the Jeff Johns run of Green Lantern is great. You kidding me? Okay. I never. I, I remember he had a long run of Green Lantern that's like super well regarded. Starting when? And I read it. I read the la, like the last half. Uh, he. I think he started in like 2005. Okay. I was well and out of I read Green Lantern like, before then. I read the last half, and he actually did some really cool things in that book. There was, um, there was a yeah. fairly there was a fairly dry period of of Green Lantern comics where well, like. The best stuff was like uh, Green Lantern, Arrow, Team Up stuff. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Wasn't that like in the 70s? Yeah, but I'm saying like there was that and then there was like a long dry spell before there was some... Yeah, Je Jeff Johns relaunched the book in, 2000, in the 2000s and I mean I, I was not reading a lot of DC at the time and I heard so many good things about the run. I jumped on and uh, I was definitely... 
pretty happy with it. I mean, that was like I read all the um, what was the big event? Darkest, uh, Blackest Night. I read I read the book leading up to to Blackest Night and did that whole event, and it was it was pretty good. Like, I mean, it definitely made me enjoy the character for the time, you know. Well, yeah, I I feel like maybe the movie tried to. But I don't know that that storyline, but I feel like they tried to do something like that in the movie. Um, well, I think they introduced like the con. Didn't they introduce the concept of like the different like spectrums of the Green Lantern core and there was like the Yellow core and um, they were like seeding that there was going to be more like different different factions of Green Lanterns. They definitely, they definitely seeded like a sequel for sure. Yeah. Um, that will never happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going to give it another go in a few years. I think they're going to do a Green Lantern core movie, so we'll see. We shall see. But uh, was so... Ryan Reynolds' remember? best movie was still definitely Maybe. I mean, not that I saw it. I heard that it was good. Oh, yeah, right. You saw it. Was, um, was, it def- was that definitely the best movie he was in? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. So, so so Ian, just just to finish off the the Doctor Strange, you you did enjoy it? Are you uh? Are you I did enjoy it. I read I read the first two issues, and um, I mean, as far as comics go, like it, uh, you know, I'm interested in the story. Um, you know, the art was cool. The concepts are really cool. Um. So yeah. All right, cool. Um, and was that it? Did you get any other books? Oh, I did get one more book. I got I got the uh, same author. Um, I grabbed Vader down. Oh, yes. You're grabbing uh, a bunch of books we talked about, or a couple. Yeah, you, you, guys you said just this bought one the one-shot? The um, Vader down number one? Vader down number one, yeah, the beginning. Part okay. one of six, it says, though. Yeah. Um. All right, I'm going to start off with, I feel like this was the most expensive book I bought. Well, was it four ninety nine? It's four ninety nine, and it took me five minutes to read. Yeah, it's very so, action heavy. At like a dollar a minute, like <laughs> that was a little disappointing. <laughs> like it's an expensive yeah. that's an expensive book. I mean, yeah, the art is cool and yeah, it's action heavy. It's not too like you know, I I do want to get into Vader's character a little cuz I'm always like I'm always more interested in the villains. In, but Ian, uh, that's more cost effective than a lot of fans. Fair fair point. Throwing that out there. Um, but you know, well, I don't pay. I don't really pay for those either. So, oh jeez. Well, hey, hey, Ian, if you are interested in Vader, I mean, obviously you've been listening to the podcast. I think uh, we've been talking up the Vader book, the the first twelve issues of that. You should definitely check those out if you're at all interested in more uh, Vader comics. Well, that's the other thing. Apparently, I have to if I want to hear the re- or see, hear the rest of this Vader down story because it crosses like six different comic books. No, it crosses over with Star Wars and Darth Vader. Okay, so books. three different books. Well, no, no, no. The the Vader Down is just a one shot, so you just buy that. That's part one, and then it starts crossing over into the two books. So it, it's just really two books you're reading. No, I'm looking at the back page a- after the one shot. Oh, and it goes Darth Vader, Star Wars, Darth Vader. So you see, yeah. I don't like that though. I don't like that I got to keep reading different books to get one story. But they want your money, man. Yeah, no, that's true. Or, or I mean, you could always just wait for uh, the trade when it's invariably collected down the road. Yeah, that's what I usually do. They spent a lot of money getting Star Wars. They're they're trying to make a lot of money back. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, well uh, that was definitely the most important news of the day. Obviously, Ian going to the comic shop. But uh, I think JC has uh, the next bit of news. Do I have the next bit of news? Oh yes, this is all you. Yes, I, I suppose I suppose this uh, this won't make any uh, consequence to you, but um, the news came out that Stephen Moffat is leaving Doctor Who after the next uh, season, and he's been running the show for the last eight seasons, so that's fairly big news. Um, but hasn't this been going on for like fifty seasons? So like, isn't there always turnover? Like, why is this news? Yeah, there's always there is always turnover, but he's been doing it for eight years, so it's. It's, you know, it's a significant change. Um, the guy who's taking over is Chris Chibnall, who uh, 
created the show Broadchurch, um, and also did a couple years of the show T- Torchwood, which was a Doctor Who spinoff. So, mm. you know, it'll be really? in good hands. Aaron, you're gonna let that pronunciation go. You're gonna give me a hard time about all of them. You're just gonna let him give him a pass there. Wait, what did he say? I don't know. Say it again. I couldn't even understand it. Torchwood. No, that was the show. Churchwood. Yeah. What did I mention? Churchwood. Who's the guy that's taken over? Chibnall. Chibnall? It's, it's C-H-I-B-N-A-L-L. Chibnall. Oh, I have no idea how to say that. How would you say it, Ian? Because <laughs> however you say it's going to be wrong, so you, you just go ahead and say it. <laughs> um, what was the spelling again? No, let's move on. So... How, just out of curiosity, like how many how many seasons of Doctor Who is there again? Well, the just show, roughly the show has existed for fifty years, but it it's was existed fifty years seriously. The first the first episode came out in the sixties. Um, wow, is it but, really fifty years? Because that was just a guess by me. No, no, they had their fiftieth anniversary a couple years ago. But they were off the air from, like, 88 until 2005, except for, like, a one TV movie. Um, but so it's been back since 2005. So it's been back for, like, eight years. Or, yeah, eight or nine years. So do they ever advertise, like, this is season, like, 120 or anything like how many seasons do they say they it's had? Well, they they do it as like the new series. Uh, so oh it, yeah, they call them series over there, huh? Yeah, but so it's like um, they they've broken it up essentially to the new and the old essentially. So they're going into season ten of the relaunched series. Um, Oh, okay. You know, the, so it's the modern the modern show. Modern Doctor Who. So if I was to watch Doctor Who, now I'm sure you're gonna you're rec- gonna recommend me just dozens and dozens of episodes, but if I was going to jump into Doctor Who, you'd probably recommend like the modern series, right? Yeah, no, I would I wholeheartedly tell people if you want to watch Doctor Who, you should start watching it from the modern series. The great thing about the show is there's a lot of point, points where you could jump on. There's Anytime there's a new Doctor is a point where you can jump on because naturally mm-hmm. it's a relaunching point for the show. Uh, right. I mean, if you're looking for like an individual episode to watch to understand why the show is really great, there's a number of those as well. Like The most commonly said one I think would probably be Blink. Um, but I would say start with the, the beginning of the relaunch in 2005. Um, and, uh, was that, did that have the guy that was in Jessica Jones? Um, so the very first season they were back, it had Christopher Eccleston as the doctor. And then David Tennant took over in the second season. Oh, Okay. And you'd recommend his uh, his seasons, because that that'd probably be who I would watch since I'm familiar with him. Yeah, his seasons were great. Um, you know, I I. And then the following that was Matt Smith, who really took the show to new heights, um, as far as like popularity. Um, Not like new heights of just like climbing a ladder. Yeah, I I kind of got that. JC, thank you. Well, it all depends on what your perspective is. <laughs> this guy, new heights of popularity. Well, because not not a new heights of disdain. Well, no, it could be new heights of quality, and some people prefer Tenet, some people prefer, mm. prefer Smith, some you know. All right. Um, uh- just a little update. This pl- this black powder bourbon's going down real smooth. Just a little update, guys. Aaron's getting drunk tonight. <laughs> Monday night. Why not? 
Uh, well, so what do you think? Are you are you optimistic about the new showrunner taking over? Are you sad that the the old one is gone? How do you well, feel? It's interesting because it's been met with a lot of um, cheers and jeers. I mean, there's a lot of people who feel like he, you know, had some def definite bad qualities um, to his stories and stuff, um, and that the fresh blood will be welcome. I think there's also a lot of people who feel the opposite way that he did a great job. I think it's just a fanboy-ish type of thing to really. If you're enjoy, if you're watching and enjoying the show, and you're lamenting the showrunner, um, then your problems are probably somewhere else. I think the guy who's taking over has had a lot of success. I mean, Broadchurch is a really well regarded show, so um, if he can bring that quality of writing to it, it's certainly optimistic. And I think Doctor Who is definitely a show where an injection of fresh blood is always good because. That's well, that's kind of their MO, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's the lifeblood of the show is Chan. Yeah. Oh, um, you know what? Well, I might as well talk about this now. Uh, speaking of Doctor Who, um, the new show that just came out on Friday, Legends of Tomorrow, that had a Doctor Who alum in it, right? It certainly did. Who who was that? Who did he play? Was he a doctor? No, he was um, Rory. Um, and that was Arthur Darville was the actor. Um, and he was he was there for a good chunk um, of the Matt Smith um, era of Doctor Who. Okay, but, his well, name is Arthur Darville. Gotcha. Yeah. And he and was he plays. He, oh, go ahead. He he was the love interest of Karen Gillan, um, who Ooh. you might remember from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yes, I do. That sexy bald alien. Oh, I loved her in that movie. She looks she looks good in uh, in person. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Oh no, I've seen pictures of her. She's a she's a very stunning woman. But I just thought she she looked awesome in that movie. Like she had the she had a great look. Um, but I was gonna say Arthur Darville plays Rip Hunter in the show that just came out, Legends of Tomorrow. I did watch the episode last night. Uh, did anyone else see that? When I say anyone else, I'm talking to JC because I, I, I know Ian did not watch this. I have not caught it yet. Uh, uh, did somebody right. say my name? I checked out on Doctor Who. I was still thinking about Doctor Afra from Vader Down. <laughs> nice. Uh, now, JC, you're probably going to watch this show, right? I mean, you are a DC fanboy, or at least you profess to be. So, I am a DC fanboy. Um, but you don't get into these CWDC shows. There's a lot of badness there. Um, a lot but of badness? Is that a word? Badness? I'm, I'm using the word to describe are, my Are you going to start talking good? Yep. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I from the trailers and stuff that I've seen for this show, I want to get drunk and watch this show. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, it cracked out. Yeah, it, it's a show that just like the shows that it's spun off from, you really have to take it with a big grain of salt in that it's pretty cheesy. And a lot of times like the cheesiness works in its favor and the performances and the characters kind of like get you through it. Um isn't Although the last weird. like the last couple seasons of Arrow has been kind of testing that, but the other show, The Flash, has been really great, and I think if you gave that a try, JC, you would probably get something out of that. Well, I've seen the first four or five episodes of that. Oh, that's right. Did we talk about this? We did. We probably did. Um, but no, and, no. So my my isn't Superman also in this show? Legend show? No. No, you're thinking there's a there's a Supergirl that's on uh, uh, no, no, CBS. No, no, I mean, I mean the actor who played Superman. Oh yeah, Brandon Routh. Yeah, yeah, he's on. Um, he he debuted on Arrow, and uh, he's one of the leads in the new show. In this new show, yeah, he plays uh, Ray Palmer. Is it awkward that like everyone's like, hey, isn't that Superman, guys? Well, it, it's funny because when he when he started on Arrow, he um. 
Are you going to get another beer right now, JC? I can neither confirm nor deny. Hey, you guys were in my fridge a minute ago. <laughs> so speaking yeah, all of I, Superman... I, all um, I saw was like like the Ian's robe. That's so I, I didn't know where Ian went. You guys yes, are all going to be wearing robes for this podcast before long. Ian is broadcasting in nothing but a robe. <laughs> Do you guys have a robe? Uh, I'm going to get one after this episode. Yeah, you better. I, 20 I was, bucks at Costco, I, I can get you one of these. I was going to wear a onesie, nice. but... It looks comfy. It's it's amazing. If you had a robe, um, you'd be wearing it. No, no, JC, they they have fun with it. That that you know, he was obviously another DC character. So there, there's little there's little uh, nod winks and nods. And, so and he's of actually Superman. Great... There's a there's a movie coming out, right? Uh, there, there, Ian's driving the show right now. Yeah, seriously, driving it into the ground. Um, no, I'm driving it into our next news story. Oh, geez, is he really doing this? Yes, he is. Yeah, that I was am. a segue. And... Oh, you're yeah. totally skipping my, my story that I want to talk about. But 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 just let me say, um, yeah, yeah, he was on uh, season three of, of Arrow, and he was actually a great part of that season, and um, he's he's one of the better parts of the last couple seasons. But he's one of the leads in this new show, and just to, to put it succinctly, the new show has a lot of good and bad. Um, I like that they threw all these kind of disparate characters together. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, there's some pretty, like, entertaining moments, and there's some moments that are cringeworthy. Okay, so it's way it's, too it's late a, for succinct. You got wait, JC, make him, a, make him move on. It's a very, it's a very mixed bag after the first episode. Like, I'm so on board because I'm kind of invested in like this, this TV universe they've made. But uh, it it's hopefully will get a little more on solid ground because it, it was it was very much a mixed bag after the first episode. Well, you know, I, it looked like a mixed bag from the trailer, but it looked like crack. So yeah, it, it's it's definitely a hodgepodge. They're throwing a lot of stuff together and just kind of seeing if it sticks. And so speaking of throwing a lot of things into a product and seeing if it'll stick. Let's talk a little Batman Superman that Ian was talking about. All right, we might as well roll into another DC. I tried. I tried to segue, but... So, I don't know if you saw these photos that Empire Magazine just put out for this uh, Batman vs. Superman movie, but a certain Mm -hmm. minor character gets revealed, which leads me to believe that... Minor character? Uh, Dark side? Minor character? Right. So, leads me to believe that maybe throwing Doomsday in that trailer before was was not that big of a deal because he's not the big bad. Right. I will, I think literally the only villain that could be bigger than Doomsday is Darkseid, and I'm kind of surprised they're already, like, teasing him. Well, they put the Omega symbol out there. They didn't, like, show him, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you well, got two, two, two big heroes. You got to have two big villains. Right. Well, big heroes. You got like six big heroes, actually. Yeah. Well, what's Wonder the name of the movie? Batman v Superman. Okay. Dawn of Justice, though. There you go. You got to say the whole whole name. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, well, obviously, we know there's going to be two Justice League movies after this film, so you would assume that they have to kind of throw the biggest villain they have out there if they're going to do, like, a Justice League movie right. Wow, that is a, that is a photo. I didn't I have not seen that yet. Mm-hmm. Now, that's part of the, the whole... Isn't that, like, a dream sequence in the movie? Or, like, a vision he's having or something? I thought that was the rumor, that that was a, that, that was a vision that, like, this whole desert scene where... Uh, the Batman in the trench coat is like captured by this like villainous Superman and unmasked and all that. You see like images in the trailers. Like right. oh, no. I, I thought they confirmed that was a like a dream sequence. Well, they're selling it as a dream sequence, but we, I, you know, I think it could that could be misdirection because apparently mm-hmm. also in that scene, um, that dream sequence, our characters, um, I'm forgetting their name right now, but. 
Um, like these winged characters from um, Dark Side of the World. Oh, uh, is it the Parademons? Yeah. Parademons. Yeah. I, I am not a DC guy, but uh, I think I read that. Yeah. Parademons. The other... Well, the other news that you put in there was... Uh, well, well let, let, let me just say, this image, if anyone hasn't seen it, you should check it out because it's a great shot. And uh, if you are a DC uh, fanboy, like you'll probably squirm a little bit when you see that, that shot because it is pretty iconic. And uh, I'm sure it foretells things to come. Yeah, I definitely think it's... I mean, it's going to be a visually great movie. Oh, yeah. I think... Um, and it's going to just throw all these characters that we've always wanted to see in a movie into a movie, and then hopefully they don't fuck up the story, because it seems like it's going to have a thousand characters. Right. Well, here's why I'm cautiously, very cautiously, cautiously optimistic. No, number one, I do like Zack Snyder. Like, for the majority of his movies I've enjoyed... And you can say what you want about the guy, but even the people that really like hate Zack Snyder will admit that he puts a good-looking product on screen. They don't always agree with the story choices, but you, even his haters will agree that his movies look good, so right. I expect nothing less in this film. But I'm also cautiously optimistic for the story just because Chris Terrio was the one that scripted this movie. And he was the guy that did, uh, he scripted Argo, which I I think was one of the best movies of the last couple years. Well, it's coming from the guy who didn't want to talk Oscars last week. (laughs) Hey, uh, Aaron's top films of the year is, uh, is a whole different beast than the Oscars. I don't care about the Oscars ceremony, but, uh, the, the movies that I think are the best are the ones that I think are the best. Well, it was just it was entertainment news, and I feel like JC wanted to talk about it. JC, you want to leave Aaron out of this? We'll have a little conversation real quick about the Oscars. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, you we guys don't can need... do your own show. We, we can we can rehash that the week of the Oscars. We'll just take a quick like you know couple yeah, minutes because I it's I'll not going to take out. me long because I'll I'll be honest I I saw three movies last year uh, Star Wars, Ex Machina, and Inside Out, and uh, were any of those nominated for Best Picture even? No. Um, okay, so I can't I can't speak to the Oscars very much anyway, but I can oh, lay to rest for I, animated film. Okay, but not Best Picture. No. Those are all good movies, by the way. Yeah, I was um, gonna ask. Uh, has anyone besides Ian seen Ex Machina? Yes, I own it. Oh, you have. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it was my favorite. I, I loved it. I need to see that because that was uh, the directing debut of. Uh, uh, the uh, writer that I really enjoy. So, um, you gonna drop a name or? Nope. Um, yeah. I'm actually. <laughs> he really enjoys it. Okay. Enjoys Moving it. on. All right. I, I so I can't one. speak to any of the the films that were nominated, but I can. You know, I, there was obviously some controversy uh, concerning the Oscars. I can definitely lay that to rest right now. Um, Revenant should not. Count as uh, one of the Oscars for this year, definitely. Dude, they, sh- they should not win. Shouldn't count. Dude, Ian, the line of hipsters that I saw like driving by the Vista the last couple nights, like the line of hipsters to see that movie. I've heard oh, it was my really God. good. Oh it yeah, it probably is really good. And of course, JC saying that he was probably in line. Aside from the <laughs> fact that I don't want it to be involved with the Oscars in any way, shape, or form, I do hope Leo still wins the. The best actor, because because that's my boy. But wait, so so you're just saying that specifically because he because it didn't come out in or it didn't come out a wide release till 2016. It didn't come out on any release. It came out in four theaters on Christmas Day. Now I will concede that it made more money in those four theaters on that one day than six of the eight films that were nominated for Best Picture. But this isn't a money making game, or Star Wars would win. Okay. Yeah, it didn't not, come out. It did not come out last year. Well, so you know that being the big controversy, did, we've we we solved it. It's, you it's know, te- it te- you know, did. it would be fun if like the top five grossing movies every year were the Oscar nominations, and just like, you know, these awful awful movies that make a shitload of money get nominated. 
Uh, yeah. Well, hey, um, speaking of which, it's Alex Garland. And no, I'm not going to cut that out that I just had a, a brain fart on the name, JC. You know I do that sometimes. Alex Garland, he wrote The Tesseract, The Island. He uh, wrote uh, 28 Days Later. That was directed by Danny Boyle. He's He is one of my favorite authors. I read a lot of his stuff in college. And it's cool that he's directing a movie that apparently is good. No, it's we'll see it soon. Kind of like a prequel to uh, The Force Awakens because it's got two of the actors from Force Awakens in it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oscar Isaacs and who's the other one? The, the, the Weasley commander. Dom Hall. Oh, Dom Hall Gleason. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, nice. you know, there, there's a weird, there's a weird try, like, movie thing where, like, they're in that movie together, and then Oscar Isaac is in Inside Lewin Davis with Adam Driver. Hey. Oh. So anyway, Batman, Superman. Those what are else, going what, me, right? what else is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Folk, the folk music movie. Yes. Um, oh, all right. So, but yeah, Batman vs Superman. I guess uh, Kevin Smith was also talking about how great Affleck's performance was in it. Because I guess Kevin Smith has seen the movie now, which you know, that's not surprising. He's in the he's in the know and in the I, Hollywood circles and all that. Yeah, and well, we know he wrote. You know, uh, well, that wasn't what I got from the article. It, it sounded like he just saw the trailer and said, like, just period. He's the best Batman ever because looks. Because he said he, he he yeah he is Bat Bruce Wayne in real life. Well, but if I that's the criteria, then Affleck's not the best one ever. Clooney. Well, who would that, who would Clooney that be? is Bruce Bale? Wayne. Oh. Clooney is Bruce Wayne. Clooney is I, Bruce I thought Wayne. I thought if Bale was is. a better Bruce Wayne to be honest. Well, I think that Clooney. Well, actually, no, no, bad no, no. rap take, for being I, in a bad movie. I yeah. take that back. I take that back. I think Michael Keaton did the best Bruce Wayne of of any Batman. He had such an eccentric, weird portrayal. Like I, that's my favorite Bruce Wayne. Right, but if we're saying who's Bruce Wayne in real life, it's Clooney. Hmm. Well, you, you do have a point there. Yeah. The guy oh, owns the satellite now, that spies so. on the Sudan. Yeah, and and he was a bachelor forever too. I mean, yeah, he is yeah. Bruce Wayne. If any of them are. Well. So Kevin I, Smith I, got that wrong, but. Well, well I, I think as I think as far as anyone saying, uh, if you're a Frank Miller fan, I think uh, Kevin Smith is probably correct in saying Affleck looks like the Frank Miller Batman. Well, right. Well, I think we can agree on that. I mean, but let's take this with a grain of salt. I am an unabashed Kevin Smith fan, but Kevin Smith has also said that he would cast Affleck as the shark in Jaws. So he is. He does have a jaw. He is an unabashed Affleck lover. Yeah. Um, he he doesn't think Affleck can do any wrong. So. That's true. Of course, you got to take that with a grain of salt. But he's also, I mean, he 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 also is putting his he he has a pretty successful podcast now, and the things he says, like he has to have some type of credibility. So I'm pretty sure if he didn't think that, he just wouldn't say anything. If you say so. I mean... But no, I mean, I, I got what Ian got from the from the article as well, that he's... I don't think he's saying that from having seen the movie. I think he's saying that from the way Affleck looks in the movie looks uh, like the best version, like, of Batman yeah. film. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Because Christian Bale was not a good Bruce Wayne. You don't think so? Because I, I thought he was... I actually thought when when they were casting a new Batman series, I actually thought that Christian Bale would be a good Bruce Wayne, and I thought he was in those films. I mean, he was a fine Bruce Wayne. He just was a terrible Batman. Yeah, I think that's I think that's was more the case. I mean, I didn't think he was a terrible Batman, but like obviously, a lot of people thought the voice was kind of whack. It was. I didn't think he was a terrible Batman, but uh, I thought he was a better Bruce Wayne. I thought he was in some good Batman movies. Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, hey, guys. So what else is going on? Guys. 
Did anyone watch the X-Files last night? Hello. I did, with no sound. Can we, can we, can we talk about the biggest story? The X-Files are back, baby. So you watched it without sound? I watched How it without sound. Possible, Ian? What were you doing? Um, I was in a place where there was not volume on the TVs. Where was that? Were you at the Rustic last night after I left? Of course you were. I made sure it was after you left, but yeah. Oh, how dare you. We were talking a, a significant amount of shit about you. How? D did you show up too, JC? I would like I would like to claim that I did, but I did not. Yeah, oh, I just yeah, sat there and did a crossword didn't. puzzle I... and watched X-Files silently. Which is exactly what I would have done if you were there. I'd have just sat next to you and done it. Mm. Well, since I'm the only one that actually watched X-Files, uh, let me just first off give a brief perspective and say that as a pretty huge X-Files fan, I watched... All of the original series, both movies, yes, even the second one, it wasn't that bad, but it was kind of bad. Um, I am... Wait, the new show was bad, kind of bad, or the, yeah, second, the second movie? The second movie was kind of bad. I still enjoyed it, but, you know... It's actually similar to what the, the, the first episode of the new series did, which was just to bring back the old characters. And I, got, I, I have to be honest, I'm not being objective about this because everything about the new show was so steeped in nostalgia that I couldn't help but enjoy it. I mean, seeing the opening credits, and it's the original opening credits, and when those like hit, I didn't care what happened after that. Like I was going to be entertained by the show. And just to have, like, David Duchovny and um, uh, Julian, Julian Anderson, Anderson back, they, uh, you know, it, it just, like, like, that's all I needed, you know? The show, like, the first episode wasn't, like, honestly, like, it wasn't great. It was a little slow. Um, like, it was a little stiff. Uh, Chris Carter directed the episode, and... Like, I've never really enjoyed the, like, the government conspiracy, like, mythology episodes. Like, I never thought those were, like, on par with the uh, the Monster of the Week, just, like, one-offs that X-Files oh, did. I'm the opposite. So I, like, I like the government conspiracy ones. You know, I wanted to like those, but I, I think by the end, when it just didn't really lead anywhere, I, I just got annoyed by it. Like, I got annoyed by that whole plot line, because it just never led anywhere. You know, it was just always, like, there, there's something else. Like, there's something more. And, I mean, last night they, they, they tried to kind of, I guess, open up even a bigger conspiracy. And they, they showed the original Roswell crash and all of that. And it was cool. Like, I, I'm in. Like, I'm going to watch all of it. And I enjoyed it because it's X-Files and X-Files is back. Uh, but I am hoping that the show is going to get better and hopefully kind of get into some new areas and uh, some. Hopefully, we're we're going to see some like stuff that hasn't been so like heavily touched on before. I did feel a lot of the like like I was a large X Files fan as well, but I always kind of felt it was like there's a really big mystery, and then when you're about to find something out wait until you find out how much bigger this mystery is. Right. It just never, it was never unraveled. You really had the answer, so... Yeah. I mean, even the even the finale didn't really answer anything. Like, what, it was always, like, left what, off that, like, maybe we're going to get a huge movie, you know? Like, I thought we were going to get a huge movie in 2012 that was going to, like, be the big alien invasion because it wasn't that when, like, the invasion was supposed to hit. The whole thing is like, well, no. That's just when the world was supposed to end, according to the Mayans. Yeah, but but in the in the mythology of the show, that was also when like the aliens actually like reveal themselves. Yeah, I didn't watch the last season, so. Yeah, that was um, like seeded even earlier than the last season, I think. I only like, watch like, random episodes of X Files uh, with my uncle. He was a big fan of sci-fi. Well, 
Honestly, like, like old kind of, campy sci-fi monster movies too, which was yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, well, that's like a good way to watch the X Files because there was so many great one-off episodes, like the, yeah, uh, the, I agree, Monster of the Week episodes, and that that's what I'm hoping we're gonna see at least like two or three of those in in this six-episode run. Probably not though. Oh, I think we are. I I, I really do. Six episodes. Yeah, I know, but I think there's gonna be at least three like Monster of the Week episodes. I think they've already talked about that. Okay. Like, so, I would be shocked if this whole season was just, like, mythology. My only comment on the show last night, um, they both looked really good. Jillian Anderson more than David Duchovny. <laughs> well, she, that woman looks I was more great. surprised by her, yeah, because, you know, he's just, like, an older guy, which, you know, fine. Yeah. But they both look great for as yeah, long ago as that show was. Yeah, he, he looks a little tired, and I think maybe that was, like, put on a little bit for the, for the show just because it's supposed to, you know, show a passage of years and, oh. and on Fox's life. But uh, he, he looked yeah. tired in the show. I, I thought it's Jillian Anderson looked out, great. Right? What? You know what's been wearing him out, right? What's been wearing him out? What? Uh, six seasons of Californication, just getting like unlimited Putang. I was gonna say that show becoming his actual life, but yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. He went into like sex rehab a few years ago, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. Yeah, it must be tough being him. It must be tough being Fox. Remember? Do you guys remember when he used to do that porn show on Showtime? Uh, I thought that's what we were talking about. Are, we, are you talking about Californication? No, no, uh, Red Shoe Diaries. Oh no, I didn't even know he did that. Yeah, no, like, that. Yeah. He'd be like, he'd be like, this was like pre X Files, and he'd be reading like a letter, you know, and then it would fade into like some really cheesy Showtime Skinamax porn. So just like soft porn. Yeah. But like. Really? Well, like early '90s. What? Wow, it's 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 actually surprising that he got out of there. Wow. <laughs> okay. You guys uh, not... <laughs> Wait, you just broke up because of your shitty ass mic, JC. Say that again. I was like, you guys did not know about this. No, no, I had no idea this happened. No. What were you doing watching soft porn in the early '90s? What weren't you doing? Were you like yeah, eight? How old were you? Like eight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Geez, started early. David, I mean, um, um, sixty-six episodes of the Red Shoe Diaries, and he he narrated or like introduced everyone. Yeah, like he. He uh, yeah, he like it was kind of like. You know, he was reading, like, someone's sex letter or whatever. I don't really... Oh, my God. Okay, no wonder he uh, went into sex rehab. I, I was I was 13 or whatever, so I don't really remember. It went on until 99, so... Well, he was doing this, like, while he was doing X-Files. That's 90, interesting. 92 to 99. Wow. All right, is there oh, any more news? Oh, I couldn't find any news. We can talk about this. Hopefully we can talk about this more after you guys have actually seen the episode. And the second episode premieres tonight. Uh, Monday night, so uh, hopefully you guys will check both of those out, and we can talk about them next week. Yeah, they're on they're on the uh, docket to watch. So cool. Yeah, I, I couldn't stay away. Like I I watched the episode live. I uh, and and that's probably the first episode of live TV I've seen in ages. So it was definitely appointment viewing for me, and I needed to watch that taste of bitter defeat out of my mouth after the Cardinals just got completely destroyed by the Panthers last night. So let's talk a little hockey about how Aaron didn't come to hockey. Let's Sunday. talk about how Aaron had his first weekend off in months. I had two whole days off in a row, and I just wanted to watch football yesterday, JC. So instead of playing two hockey games, I played one, and I went and watched football. Wait, so and you, you played a game? I kind of wish I wouldn't have watched football because it was a trouncing. So you played a you played for another team, but not for your team. 
I played for my other team at 3 o'clock, and then I rushed over to the bar to watch the Arizona game, and uh, it was... How'd that work out for you? Not not great. I you kind of wish I would have played goalie, because apparently whoever filled in for me allowed seven goals, so... And that and the, the, that goes on my stats. Oh, boo-hoo. Yeah. Yeah. We're the ones who had to play the game. Who scored oh. last night, by the way? This the is one. a hockey minute, by the way. I'm the one who got a puck to the face on the bench. Not really? Well, you don't look any worse for wear. I feel it, though. Um, yeah, Ian, did you score last night? I did. Yeah? Were you playing defense again? I was playing defense. Hmm. Good times. All right. That was your Hockey Minute, sponsored by <laughs> Nobody Cares. So, oh, man. You guys put this on the docket. All right. Video games for two minutes. Uh, there is a big Battlefront tease that uh, just came out today, right? Yeah. And Teasing the new expansion from Battlefront. I think we all own this game, so I guess we can talk about it for a second. Yeah, I mean, it's just a picture of... Uh... Luke and Han on that bitter, bitter, cold Hoth. So it's some sort of Hoth. Wait, wow. that we, already, probably... we already have Hoth, Luke, and Han in this game. Yeah, is, is that actually a tease? Like, really? But they're, well, yeah. they're on Tauntauns, so maybe. Where are my Tauntauns in this game? That's one thing that is missing. Well, maybe maybe, you... maybe you're going to get to run around in Tauntauns. I'm not buying a season pass. Just to Ian, you're going to have to pay $50 to ride a Tauntaun. I, well, I won't do that, but and and honestly, I do have to berate JC for making this his game of the year because it's a it is a fun Isn't game that, that I like to, that I like to play, and it looks beautiful, it sounds beautiful, um, but it's that's a little bit of an insult to people who actually made good games and burned some right. calories on lots of content. Right. That that being said, it's a fun game, um, and you guys know as well as anyone else, that I take a lot of joy in running around as a stormtrooper and gunning down those rebel scum like the dogs they are. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've heard are that we gonna, before. I would like to get some some more customization on, on building characters, though. Cause, See, uh, I don't really care, because if I'm playing as a stormtrooper, I just want to look like a stormtrooper. See, I don't think you would be the stormtrooper, though. Like, I see Aaron as, like... Because as much as I like to be in the Empire, like, I would never make it as a Stormtrooper or anywhere in the Empire. But I see Aaron yeah. as, like, he's that Weasley commander, like the guy from Ex Machina. Like, that would be that would be Aaron in the Star Wars world. Weasley commander. Yeah. Oscar Isaac? No, no, no. Not, that's oh, the... Dama Hall Gleason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Empire commander. Right. Because, I mean, the Empire, they're a bunch of clean-cut Nazis. Like, that that's going to rule me and JC out immediately. Oh, okay. Um, because, you know, they, they would never let JC get away with that beard in the Empire, for sure. That's, and I don't, that's true. I don't shave but every, like, three weeks. So, no, Ian is definitely too dirty to be in the Empire. Yeah, so, I mean, where would we fall? We'd, I guess we'd have to be rebels. Um, but, you know, Aaron, I, like... I keep waiting for the day where I'm going to have to, like, you know, because you know, Aaron's dad still lives in Arizona. I'm just waiting for the day where I'm going to have to teach him how to shave, but it's just never going to happen. I don't think he's ever going to even grow any <laughs> facial hair. So I feel like I feel like Aaron would be like the, like, you know, you know who Greg, Greg uh, Grunberg is? No. He was the guy who was on uh, Heroes, and he was in the new Star Wars movie. The chubby guy? Yeah. I feel like that. I feel like that's who Aaron would be. Now Aaron's not a chubby guy, though. The chubby Probably guy. Not. I know he's not, but I just feel like that's the character. That would be the character, but I'd be the guy standing by Mon Martha at the like holo deck, uh, like issue, uh, giving advice to uh, to someone. Mm-hmm. No, see, Good that's times. where maybe where I see JC like being like some sort of like hanging out in some cantina somewhere across the galaxy. Overhears some information, and then he's the first guy that like calls either the Empire or the Rebels. Yeah, I can says, see that oh, too. The, the droids here. He's like the informant. 
Yeah, I can see him like 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 slinking away with that beard, and as soon as you see him on screen, you're like, oh, he's a villain. I'd be a bounty hunter. Maybe. I see that. I don't see quite bounty hunter, but you're giving info to bounty hunters. Like you're an information broker. Like I think that's that's the character that JC is. And by the way, I got a little I got a little five o'clock shadow going. I mean, it did take me a week to grow, but Please. I got a little something going on. Come Ian, on. Ian would probably be a hut. <laughs> JC does have that. <laughs> oh damn. Oh damn, JC just went there. Yeah, all right. Oh shit. No, I was just gonna say JC's got that beard, but like for for as like as much as he's always had a beard as long as we've known him, like it's a pretty well groomed beard. Like I I feel like he's maybe a little bit more metro than we're ready for. Uh. Like, he might be yeah. waxing his balls or something, and we don't. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're the one who waxes them for me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Oh, come on, JC. I'm not going to go that far, you know, doing the slash and burn farming, but... Oh, damn. All right, moving on. Nobody cares about the Battlefront tease because that game was not that great. It was passably fun, and I am insulted that JC gave that his game of the year. That just proves to me that he did not play any video games this year. It is. To be fair, I do have fun playing it though, just sort of casually. It's it's a it's a I do too, game. very casually. It's passably entertaining. I haven't played it for a while, but if everyone was on, like I always say, if everyone's on and wants to play, like I'll jump on, like have fun, and then get annoyed that I didn't spawn and get shot in the back by someone because I spawn right behind them. Hopefully Although, they do fix the god awful spawn someday because it's a problem. But um, or the ability to shoot across the map. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's so. It's a little, yeah. The lasers are a little too good, but um, you know, the the single player for as little content as there is is fun to do. The co-op, like, yeah, yeah. But the they, two player co op is great. I just really yeah. wish there was three or four player co op. Yeah. But no, anyways, I, I agree. I but no, I liked it because it was a lot of mindless fun. It was I didn't have to think too much about it, and I feel like I've played too many games where I've had to think too much about, and then a lot of the other games I enjoyed that I played last year were not games from last year, so... Too much. Mm-hmm. Hey, how's your Destiny character doing, by the way? Level 65. We're really stretching out this video game minute, but I did want to also bring up one last thing. Oh, wait, no, we're on, the... well, we're on Star Wars. Can I, can I ask one question? Because the only news story that I came across was... Um, <laughs> Mostly, my news feed is is filled up with stories about Israel and sexism, which is odd because I'm not Jewish or female. But uh, um, the only entertainment news that comes across my feed is is a new theory every day about who Ray's parents are. Okay. And I did uh, skip your guys' Star Wars episode. So who do you think Ray's parents are, Ian? I'll tell you who I don't think it is. Everybody says that that the, the that um oh. Because they have the same background music. Obviously, Luke Skywalker must be her father. I think that's too obvious. Do we really think that this is the... It's not that it's too obvious. It's that you can't take your main hero from the entire series and turn him into a deadbeat dad. Mm, I just think it's too obvious. Well, your main hero from the first three movies, from, from the prequels, was the deadbeat dad. Um, yeah, but he turned out to be a villain. It's true. <laughs> true. He turned oh. out to go dark side, which is exactly what Ray would do after her father was gone for 15 years. And then came back and tried to tell her how it was. Um, all right, well... It's not Luke I Skywalker. Think... I may eat these words, but it's it's not Luke Skywalker. I, I don't think I, anything I, is confirmed, I but I also agree that I don't think it's Luke Skywalker. I think uh, it's Luke and Leia's. Luke and Leia's? Hmm, little, little product of incest, huh? Okay, well, well, it's, it's time to add some Jameson to the coffee, I think. All right, yeah, I think I think after that comment it is. Uh, well, I just wanted to, me- to mention, um, since we are technically still in the video game minute, uh, that the new Turtles game from uh, Platinum Studios looks pretty damn awesome. JC does not agree with me, 
But uh, it's a game that's coming out uh, hopefully this year. It should be this year. Uh, developed by Platinum, who are revered developers of action games. And uh, it looks great. It's soul shaded and it's kind of like harkens back to the, I think, the classic cartoon some. And uh, I don't know why JC hates it, but I think it looks great. Okay, so my problem with it is that it's it's like they couldn't decide what to do. Um, well, they're drawing from so much. They have so much material to draw from. No, they're no, taking, but, like, the best parts of a lot of things. No, no, listen, listen to me. With okay, the, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking just of the graphics. I feel like they couldn't decide if they wanted to do a like photorealistic game or a cell shaded game. And so they went somewhere in between. Instead of doing like a true cell shaded cartoonish style or a true like realistic style. Um I feel like they okay. tried to do realistic cell shading and that's just weird. I don't think so. I think it looks really good. The a trailer Basically, the story is they officially announced the game, and I say officially because uh, there's been like so many leaks about it. Um, I think they actually said today they've, quote, officially leaked it, and they included a link to the trailer. So check it out. It's on YouTube, but I think, I think, it looked, I think the animation looks great. Uh, I'm definitely in. Just when I, when I heard Turtles, Co-op, Platinum. That's all I needed to hear. I was in. All right, two things about Ninja Turtles for me. First, like, I don't think they'll ever repeat that first arcade game that was, like, the four-player co-op. Um, and I'm more of a console gamer. I don't like going to the arcade. I'd rather sit on my couch in my robe and play some video games. But that game was the best game well, I remember in the, an arcade ever. I remember, like, the two-player kind of version. The of that. NES version, right? Yeah. You remember uh, the arcade game on NES? Yeah. No, no, no. This is in an actual arcade. I know, I know. Yeah. That's what. No, no. I'm talking to JC. JC uh, remembers what I remember, which is the NES version, which was two-player. Yeah. Which was great as well. Um, I never played the arcade, the actual arcade version, which uh, apparently well, only I, Ian did. That no, explains I, I, why you play other Turtles games, because you would never play another one if you had played that one. No, I definitely played that one as well, but played more of the console version because I had... You didn't have a lot of quarters. And I had the console version, which you could play again and again. Um, and, yeah, that was... I don't think they will top that game because that was kind of the height of Ninja Turtle Mania, and it was a great game. Yeah, it was. I agree. I don't think they're ever going to top the Turtles 2, the arcade game. But I am very excited for a new Turtles game. And the other thing about Ninja Turtles, um, April O'Neil is probably my first crush in life, so shout out to her. Um, unless it was, to... did that did that come before Lion King? Because Nala from Lion King might have been my first. But oh jeez, oh, we we are not talking about your crush on Nala. Uh, it, it's only your first episode, Ian. Okay, we're not going there right now. She was a pretty sexy lion. Yeah, okay. Uh, your video game minute is now over. Thank you, people, for sticking with us. Um, now, uh, getting into the topic, topic of the week. Uh, we all read something this week, right? Am I correct in saying this? JC, uh, you read something? I might hit you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> You're just sitting back, lounging on your couch. We all read something this week, and I will say I was greatly entertained by what I read. Um, are you going to give the title first? or, or... Well, I was hoping someone would, might chime in on Should we talk on about how we felt about me, it? Helping me like, like hype it up a little bit before we, we reveal what we read. Okay, well, this book's sort of in, in my, like, this is my jam, like, this era, like, the if I was a yes. film nerd, I would be all over the, the film noir stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is this is getting adapted. And I'm, well, you know, well, yeah. you know one of my favorite movies is L.A. Confidential. Um, I liked The Black Dahlia. I'm the only person that's liked Hollywoodland. Um, um, 
I'm the only person right now drinking a glass of bourbon, so I'll at least put that on my docket in my favor. Yes? Ian, and I will agree with you. I enjoyed Hollywood Land. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, that's why you two are on a podcast together. There's not much I don't enjoy about that sort of setting, you know, the you know, 50s Hollywood crime. Right. Okay, so let's get into details. This is a book from Boom Studios written by Bryce Carlson with exquisite art from Vanessa Del Rey. I'm talking about a four-issue limited series that came out. It's now a couple years ago. I would say like a year, year and a half, two years when the first series came out. I am talking about a title with only three letters, and the title is Hit. What did you guys think? Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I felt like you needed something after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was dun. waiting for that. Um, all right, so the setup is basically the, you know, LAPD, um, organized crime, Mickey Cohen, um, LAPD sets up their hit squad. It, this is the like the setting of the story. So immediately I thought like, have I read this before? Like, is this just going to be like a, a another LA Confidential retelling? Like, yeah. Um, you know, even all the ki- like cliche characters are sort of in there, but that but he like he does a good job of of like working them in in a, like not cliche and annoying way. Like you've got your by the book guy, you know. You, You've got your your rival um, cop that's a dick for no reason, but then it turns out you're sort of not you. They don't you, fit you, into that mold throughout the whole story. Yeah, and you have your femme fatale and blah blah. Right. Blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So. I enjoyed it more as it went along because it wasn't it wasn't what I expected. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 noir, so it's cliches, but it's uh, it definitely does some different things with the cliches. Well, yeah. Here's the here's the thing. I thought I thought Bryce Carlson, uh, he embraced the trappings of like '50s hard boiled detective noir stories, and it was it was absolutely dripping with that like kind of over the top narration. Like you would you would totally see this. In in any like hard boiled like any good hard boiled detective story, but I I just I, I just felt like that embra- I, I felt like him embracing that just really actually worked to to the betterment of what he was doing in the story, and he like like here's the thing for for me like I'm a huge fan of Ed Brubaker and what he does in his crime stories. And I really just thought, like, Bryce Carlson channeled, like, Ed Brubaker to kind of perfection in this story. And the thing is, too, like, I- I'm not really familiar with, like, what happened in this era because uh, Ian is going to slap me uh, across the Internet. But uh, I've only seen, like, a little bit of L.A. Confidential. Like, I'm not that familiar with, like, the subject of this story. Like I'm not I'm not familiar with the hit squad the 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 hit squad. Um, didn't they make a Gosling movie not long ago? Yeah, didn't I didn't see it. I, I wanted to see it and then I heard it was bad, so I stayed away. That was a uh, Gangster Squad, I believe. Yeah, I think it was called Gangster Squad. So this squad. is kind of my first like experience with uh, this this material, and um, yeah, as the story went along, especially like as the plot kind of unfolded, I I got more and more invested. And, uh, and and the same with the characters because the, the characters do kind of start as like kind of like cookie cutter uh, protagonist type characters and as as the plot progresses you definitely uh, you definitely get layers of the characters that you didn't really think were there um, so that was something that like as I read the series like that that made it, like, just get better for me. Yeah, I I kind of felt like uh, that I would have liked it better had 
it been a longer series, like a, just an ongoing, mm-hmm. or, or a 50-issue run type of, you know, limited, prolonged series. Uh, right. Yeah, because you want to, like, sort of fall in love with the characters, but it's hard to do in, in four issues. And, right. And, and does, doesn't the subject matter kind of, like, doesn't it, isn't it kind of perfect for that? Because... Well, I read the second, I read the second series, which is set two years later, hit 1957, mm-hmm. um, which is, but it's also four, four issues. Um, but that pretty much tidies things up. Um, like, I don't think there's a hit. 1959 coming out. Um, okay. So. Yeah, I I agree because. It's, it's, it, I mean, it was it was still great storytelling. I thought, but I. You wanted more. Like like I loved Hundred Bullets because it went on for this long time and you could develop, you know, themes and stuff like that. And I, you know, obviously it's uh, different stories, but you can. Yeah. You can tell a different story if you have more than four issues to tell or eight issues total. Um, yeah, well, I I do really wish that Bryce Carlson did have more time to uh, develop the story because uh, I felt like the subject matter of just the general series, um, I mean, I would love to get 50 issues of an L.A. hit squad just taking out criminals because the, the court system didn't let them, like, the cops actually arrest the criminals. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I would love to see that over 50 issues. Right, and I think this was telling, you know, it was trying to tell a more concise story than that. Yeah. Obviously, and, but, you know, yeah. I, would, I, I felt, I, I guess that was my, my gripe your, was that. Your I, one I, nitpick. Yeah, my one Well, well that's, a, that's a pretty good nitpick if uh, you're complaining your that, you that the story it, wasn't yeah. long enough. Yeah. It was only four <laughs> issues. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm excited to read the next um, mini series and read this again, honestly. And it made me want to maybe want to sit down with Bryce and watch like ten noir films in a row. So and drink bourbon and smoke cigars, right? Yeah, exactly. I will. I will yeah. say my other my other the other thing I noticed at the or be- vodka on the rocks. The other thing I noticed at the beginning was because everyone's in a suit. I did realize like why superhero comics. Like why they work over maybe noir comics is in some of the action scenes I was like wait did my did that character just die and then I was like oh no they're still alive in the next scene yeah because <laughs> everyone's wearing a suit getting shot yeah well that and the fact that like the 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 plot is something that like if you read it several times like you'll get more out of it um, it's definitely worth like rereading for for several reasons um. I just wanted to say one thing really quickly about the art. I thought just right off the bat, the art was was pretty incredible. I don't know. I, I thought it was um, by by uh, Vanessa Del Rey. I just wanted to say um, I'm uh, I'm into the second series. I thought we were only going to talk about the first series tonight, but I'm into the second series, and um, I really thought like she took a big step up in this in the second series. Not to say the first series was bad at all, but like. She really, really stepped up in the second series, and uh, I'm, I'm really loving the art just overall. But I, I love to see how she evolves over over the two miniseries. I I didn't realize she did the art in the second series because I yeah, there's definitely a market improvement in the second series. Well, you know what? I think there was some time between these series, and I think she may have gone and and the, and the first series may have been her first comics work. Like I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I think in between the series, she may have gone and done some other stuff, and maybe had tweaked her style a little bit when she came back. I'm I'm not sure, but I think that might have been what happened. Well, I only saw the covers for the second series, and they looked pretty awesome. That was on your uh, Comixology app. Yes, the uh, comics dology. Next, uh, uh, that sucks. Next comics do brought to you by Comicsology. Yeah. Comicsology. Uh, only. The HBO, the HBO Go. <laughs> <laughs> if com- only. Uh, this is a weird thing, but Ian, since you're kind of like new to like reading comics digitally, what what do you think of the that experience like? 
did you do the guided view uh, format on the app? Oh, I don't know. I actually skipped through the instructions at the beginning. Um, but did you do like panel by panel? That's what I'm talking about. No, no, I was looking at it page by page. Okay. Because there's a, some called guided view where you can like zoom in and do panel by panel, and they they have like the, the comics in HD. So I, that's what I do because I'm look I I'm usually doing it on my phone. Yeah. Um, and on the phone, I think it's definitely a. Uh, well, that's the yeah. You kind of have to read it that way on the phone. I mean, even though I have the the iPhone, uh, you know, the seven, six six biggie. The the biggie. The, the six biggie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but even with that, like I definitely think the uh, that mode is better than. But obviously, if you're if you're reading it on an iPad or whatever, the yeah, I was surprised because I don't like reading anything digitally. Um, I, I don't like hardcovers either. I'm just I just like paperback. Period. Oh, um, for shame! Whenever you say that, it just kills a little bit of me inside when you say you hate the hardcovers. Hardcovers are bullshit. Ian, this is what you should get. I don't know what that is. Hard, hard, soft cover. Is that one of those like um, books that you open up and it's just a storage compartment for your weed? <laughs> no. No, it's I. I got a a set of the whole Game of Thrones series, but they're like soft cover, leather bound. So wait, wait, wait! Show that again. Well, oh, hold on. Real, oh. real quick about the, the, the iPad reading it. Like, I was surprised that, like, with the full page view, it actually, I, I enjoyed reading through the comic that way. But yeah. since I know you can do the panel by panel, I want to read through that again, doing it that way. Yeah, it, because, it's, it's, because I felt like I was rushing a little bit and not appreciating the art, mostly because I was reading yeah, it yeah. fast, but that's why I want to do it again. Yeah, I would say on the second read, definitely do the guided view because it, it, it does make you appreciate panel by panel. And also, uh, what I do is because obviously, like the artist goes into each page constructing uh, the page, so there's an option where whenever you flip the page, it'll first zoom out so you see the whole page, and then you go panel by panel, like as you swipe. So if if you can do that, like do that because it it, it allows you to appreciate the page, and then you can really like zoom into each panel. That's all. All right, so bring up those Game of Thrones. Do you guys talk about Game of Thrones on this show? Has that happened yet? Is there any Game of Thrones news? Well, there is. Oh, please, there's come on, you've listened to these episodes. There, I've I've talked like at least uh, how many episodes is this? Ten. I've there talked were, at least twenty times on how much uh, the show does not live up to the books. There were three teasers dropped this week. Um. All right. What were these teasers? They were essentially. Um, videos of different the, the three different houses uh, banners with some uh, narration over them. Is Stannis still alive? There's no like these. These are not character. Uh... Well, nobody's still alive. <laughs> uh, Everybody's uh... dead. Am I the only one who wants Jon Snow to be dead? Oh, Ian. For good. I, I just find him to be completely insufferable. On the show or the books? Because you've read all the books. Like, at le like the show. I, I'm He's... glad you're on because you can at least uh, agree with me. Here's the thing about Ian. He loves to be a contrarian, but one thing we do agree on in life, this may be the only thing, we do agree on A Song of Ice and Fire, the book series, for the most part. For the most part. Except I want Jon Snow to die. Which is ironic because if like, I was books. taking if I was taking any like Facebook quiz or like you know what Game of Thrones character are you I would be Jon Snow every single time. Yeah, and and you want him to die. What does that say about you, Ian? Well, yeah. What does that say about Ian's life? But you know, he's just an insufferable we won't, we won't jerk. Into that, it's only Ian's first episode. We don't want to get too deep here. There, there's plenty to unravel when it comes to Ian Stickroth. Many layers of the onion. Um, so, uh, are these teasers worth watching? Because I don't know if I want to really get into this. They're literally just, uh, like... W what are the three houses? Stark, Lannister, Targaryen. Hmm. Oh, that's shocking. 
I, I sorry, I don't think Stannis makes it. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Baratheon, Tyrell, and uh, Dorne probably, I guess, didn't make the. Uh, we're gonna make a big splash with the teaser. Yeah, they don't sell the tickets, man. Give yeah, the they don't what sell they the want. tickets exactly. Are Give there the any people. Starks left? Because uh, uh, I thought the Starks were all dead now. Well, Bran is back. For this oh season. yeah, Bran is back for season six, right? That's they confirmed. Did, they did tease some photos of him looking much older because he wasn't in the whole last season. Yeah, because he aged a year, which uh, when he's a teenager, you you kind of look completely lot. different after a year. Yeah. Um. By the way, let me just comment. Like, I've never heard Aaron less excited than when he's talking about Star Wars, Oscars, and Game of Thrones, <laughs> the TV show. Like, what is this podcast about again? Amazingly, like, <laughs> really into Game of Thrones and Star Wars. I mean, yeah, well, that's the that's true. I'm I'm insanely into both of those. Uh, but I'm, but you could I'm not more... sound less thrilled to be talking about it. Yeah. So what I really want, what I what I really want to happen is I want um, the guy who plays Carl in Walking Dead, and the girl who plays uh, Maisie Williams. I want them to have a crossover. The girl who oh, plays Arya Maisie Stark? Williams. No, no, yeah, Arya Stark, the actress Maisie Williams. Who would you cast to play Maisie Williams? So, so you want to have like the most badass children in? Yeah. Uh, their fiction. Yeah, I just want I just want them to go around killing people in some shit. I like have them remake Natural Born Killers. Well, the you best... want them to just go around and like kill everything and yeah. just the, win everything. Yeah. The best the best scenes in the Game of Thrones show were always Tywin Lannister and Arya Stark. I agree, actually. That was probably the best like addition to the core narrative that we've seen in the show. That was that was a stroke of genius, like bringing those two together. Wait, did did, did Aaron? That's all I'll say. That's the only thing I'll say about the show that I liked. <laughs> so I think that was it. <laughs> the only thing that you liked about the show? No, I'm obviously exaggerating, but oh, people, have you read the books? My God, I, I I'm sorry. I know I'm harping on it, but God, read the books, please. It's just so much better. And having said that, the show is not bad. It is not bad. It just kills me that it's going to finish before the books will. That is not how I wanted to see this story. Uh, well, well, Aaron, you know, you must be used to that. What? Oh, you know, if you, yeah. Finishing in a bad way? Fin fin finishing before someone else. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> how dare you! All right. So speaking of shows wow. that aren't bad, I, I watched you guys Jessica Jones show for a couple episodes. Oh yeah, what'd you think? Um, well, first off, I was it was a little distracting in the first episode because it was like a weird like knockoff version of a show. <laughs> A knockoff version of a show. It's... Yeah, it's like you had you had okay your your main character shows up and it's like okay we've got the poor man's Emily Blunt. Oh stop it! Um, Do not disparage her. And then she meets with the poor man's Robin Wright. And then she's spying on the poor man's Terry Crews. Wait, did you did you call Terry? Friend... Mike Coulter is not the poor man's Terry <laughs> Crews. Terry Crews is the poor man's Mike Coulter. <laughs> Please. Um, Damn. Oh, you know, I'm not going to say anything. Like, JC can take care of this. He's a way bigger alias slash Jessica Jones fan than me. Aside from hey, that, you guys I look was close a little... together. You guys live, like, a block apart. JC might be coming over with a baseball bat. I was a little... I found myself questioning, too, because, like, I don't know... I don't know the powers of, of these particular characters very well. Um, well, that was one knock on the show. <laughs> We didn't really know her powers either, even after watching the show. Uh, well, she kind of explains it at some point. I only got like three episodes. Right, but it, but, but it was a little fluid. I mean, you, yeah. you you heard our criticism about it, right? Like that that was one thing that was it was a little nebulous what her powers actually were. No, it's not. She's strong and she can kind of jump. 
Right, but but how far does that go? I mean, I think we kind of saw on the show that uh, it's a little fluid how her powers actually work. Well, if you read the comics... Oh, oh stop it, JC. Oh, wait. Stop. I forgot. I have read... So I have read what? I've read right. more of the Alias comic than I haven't, okay? So shut up. And so is it, it – it's Luke Cage? Yeah. Hell okay, yeah, so, it is. Okay, and his power is just he has unbreakable skin? Yeah, and he's strong. Like he has, like, super strength or he's just, like he, – he, He's works uh, out a he's, lot. He's Luke Cage strong. It's funny. It's funny. For you know, that was unclear. He didn't I, seem like insane. I know he was like holding back. He seemed to like want to sandbag it. Yeah. But it was unclear if he was like it was just the unbreakable skin, and he just worked out a lot and was sort of strong. But that that's also kind of nebulous. But you would think he's a little sure, stronger I'm, than normal. I'm pretty sure Luke Cage has super strength. Yeah. Okay. Like super is strength. Yeah. Um. But the unbreakable skin thing threw me, too, because they immediately jumped into bed. And, like, you throw on, like, a paper-thin piece of latex, and it adds, like, a half hour to your time. <laughs> how, like, how well, does the unbreakable skin adds work? a half like, hour to your time. <laughs> well, they do break a, like, they do, like, break walls and shit, right? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little, <laughs> yeah, but, you, but you know what I mean. Yeah, right there. <laughs> But you know what I mean. Like, he's got the unbreakable skin. Like, how long does that take? Oh, do I know what you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually thought of that, too. I was like, so can he feel everything with the skin? Like, I, because, I, yeah, that would kind of make some things in life uh, a little more difficult. Well, according to, to Wikipedia, he has unbreakable skin and superhuman strength. Okay, so he is, but I felt like he was sandbagging it when he was fighting. Are we really going by Wikipedia? Rugby team. I'm about to pull off uh, one of my Christmas presents, which is the in, the Marvel Encyclopedia, and look up Luke Cage and see well, what didn't. his power set really is. Well, you didn't, so someone had to, you know. Uh, well, you want me to right now? I don't so want to break up the flow of the show. Sorry I didn't, you know, name drop a, my, one of my favorite writers and then forget his name. JC, you know I have an impediment sometimes with remembering the names. That's what happens when you get old. That's why I'm surprised you haven't grown a beard yet. Oh, speaking of old, uh, please. How old are you? You keep memories. Old, old, old enough to have a, have a bad back and have to switch to defense on hockey. That's all I know. Defense is a liberal use of the word with Ian. Now, Ian actually does a... <laughs> surprisingly you didn't, decent you did job on see, defense. You did not see how deep he was on defense. Hey, there's no such thing as defense when you're down 7-3. No. Well, no, we I, couldn't. We just couldn't let them shoot. Was that last game? Yeah. Yeah, well, thank God they counted 23 shots because... Yeah, my, my save percentage went from, like, 92 to uh, 83, I think. Well, that's your fault for bailing on us. Yeah, no one can feel bad for you. All right. All right, we done here? Anything else? <laughs> Once again, Ian. Okay, uh, new host of the show, Ian Stickroth. Go ahead and, f go ahead and finish this off. Would you call me a permanent co-host, uh, or is that just JC? I would call um, I would call you. No, I'm not a permanent. Coach. Our our first guest of the show. We enjoyed having you on. Glenn uh, the show. It may happen again soon if you uh, decide to read more comics, Ian. All right, we'll see. I might I might I might give Doctor Strange another issue or two. Well, you see, do. We got a big spike in viewers from Ian's appearance. You know, mm -hmm. with his big yes. cachet, then we might have to keep him on. Or at the very least, a comixology uh, sponsorship. Yeah. Well, and the fact that Ian uh, does work right by a comic shop hopefully uh, portends some some good things with him maybe getting back into the habit a little bit. Seems unlikely. Uh, it could happen. Stranger well, I owe things them. have I, happened. I might just be reading Adventure Time exclusively from here on out, but. 
That's fine because we need to mix it up. I'd like for Ian to come on every week and just do ten minutes of Adventure Time. Yeah. We'd like do the well, voice. Um. So uh, I I think uh, we can heartily give a comic stew recommendation to uh, Bryce Carlson and Vanessa Del Rey's hit. I think at the end of this whole shebang, we can at least do that. Yes? Agreed. Okay. Bryce, when are we watching those uh, noir films? I'm, I'm down. I want to be part of that. Bourbon in one hand, cigar in the other, and uh, never mind. I was going to say something between my legs, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if they were doing that in the 50s. Wait, no, we're not doing that while we're all sitting on the couch watching movies. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, I I just like... switched to my, to, to my fantasy uh, movie watching, which was me, me being alone or kind of alone, uh, not the, that alone. The back when you were watching <laughs> David Duchovny at 8? Oh, please. I didn't, I didn't bring up the 8-year-old uh, sexual... Oh, no, yeah. I was thinking about the guy who can stuff. grow a beard. Which he probably started growing at eight. Hey, I choose not to grow a beard, okay? Well, I shaved early. You look hideous, yeah. but I choose not to grow a beard. Hey, this is like this is like six days of growth, okay? You Nobody can see, can see it. you. Nobody no one can see no you. One can, no one can see you, but there's no facial hair there. Oh, and, I, and I like shaved. I was clean shaven this morning. Stop it. Stop it. Roguish is what they call it. Roguish. All right, people. Thanks for staying with us. Um, I'm on my fourth bourbon now, so I'm going to try to end this in some kind of style. But uh, thanks for being with us. TheComicsDo.com, uh, at TheComicsDo on Twitter. Uh, go ahead and send all of your complaints, and I'm sure it's all complaints after this episode, to TheComicsDo at gmail.com. Um, go comment on JC's Instagram uh, and give him some some grief, please. It's uh, at JC Argensinger. He takes pictures of pretty women. And uh, guys, anything before we go? Thanks. Yeah. Um, comments expressed by the guests. <laughs> of course, are not Ian has something to say. Of course, he does. Indicative of the show's point of view. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, the stop by, Ian. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for coming me. on. Uh, maybe we'll have you on again very soon. Uh, that is, if you read uh, some more comics, uh, this might not be, you know, so much of an un uncommon thing. For JC and Ian, I'm Aaron, and thanks for hanging with us. If you're still here, that was a really long close. Go home, Aaron. You're drunk. I'm already home. <laughs> I'm going to the bar now. Later. Nothing? Am I just going to have to stop it now? I, I thought you stopped it like 10 minutes ago. JC, you're not going to throw in the later? Later. I usually do. No, no, no. you got to kill that. Kill that after One buy. Kill that after the like three other buys. One more time? Later. Later. <laughs> later. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>